and this will ultimately affect the competitiveness of the imported goods. And these are the primary reasons for the high cost of landlocked or landling developing countries like that of the People's Republic of Laos in our region. A competitive cross-border transport sector may be established with issues like poor vehicle standards, overloading, breakdowns, poor driving standards, lack of access for good quality vehicles, and the different engine emission standards. For example, some countries is using the Euro 5 engines and some are really using the Euro 4 or even just using the Euro 3 standards. So this creates problems in harmonization. The not smooth and efficient border crossing and processes is also a big issue. Non-harmonized customs working hours, lack of market access for the SME exports, and high entry barriers, for example, the lack of regional ICDs and consolidation points are all some pertinent unresolved issues currently existing. The differential in left and right hand drive vehicle amongst some ASEAN member countries, different vehicle specification, the country weights and dimension, vehicle standards and driving standards. Can ASEAN issue an ASEAN international driving license? This is something which is supposed to be looked at. It is hoped that the ASEAN government can encourage the investments in better equipments. This is to improve the asset utilization. And higher capacity with less environmental damage, for example, more axles to the vehicles will lessen the damage to roads and bridges and operate better efficient vehicles with less emission for carbon neutral ambition for the corridors. Better equipments we know means 